Hello, today we'll converting particles into meshes and into mash. Let's start with particles. We go to FX and then we have N particles and we create an emitter. The emitter emits from the center of the scene and before we run the simulation uh, we extend the simulation range to 1000 so we can watch it a little bit longer. Um, I show you what's happening now. The particles fall to the ground and that's the second thing we're going to change. We go to the nucleus which contains gravity for example and the gravity is currently set to 9.8. We reduce it to zero. Now the particles will stay more or less in the center of the scene. It's a dynamic system after all. Second thing we're going to, third thing we're going to change is we go to the end particle shape and here we have the shading. And in the shading we don't care about the shading actually. We just want to convert the um, view here from points. We see little dots here. So you can get closer like little dots um, to spheres. And uh, we can of course uh, change the size of the spheres um, but uh, they look like this and they behave dynamically basically the same way as uh, the points before. Fourth thing we're going to do is uh, we select the end particles and we'll apply on the field solvers a turbulence field. So the animation is a little bit more dynamic. This already is very nice. And now comes the next step. If you want to, for example, create um, put hair on them or make a fluid out of them or uh, bifrost fluid. Uh, we can't do this because they are still particles although they look like geometry but they are not geometry in a Maya physical sense. They're, so they're not NURBS or polygon uh, surfaces. But we can easily do this by uh, selecting the end particles and going to modify and then convert and down here we have end particles to polygons no option box and now check what's happening we have little objects here which don't resemble really our animation and in many cases when you try this out it really depends on how your simulation at the beginning uh, starts and uh, how big the particles are and how dyna dynamic the whole system is uh, you might not see anything at all. And I'll show you where to find it. You go back to the end particle here in the outliner. You need to pick that. Not the mesh which is currently um, <laughs> looking so poor. And uh, you can close the section of shading because we're done with that. Uh, but uh, we have a section called output mesh and that's exactly that geometry we've just created. Let's open this. And here we have a threshold. That means uh, from what size on do we want to see the particles as meshes. So let's reduce this from 0 0.1, which is the, the default, to 0 0.01. Now you see a lot more happening here. And when we run the simulation, it looks much more like what we've seen before. Uh, quite blobby, which is natural here, sort of. Uh, uh, it has to do with the maximum triangle resolution and the blobby radius scale. It's a blobby surface. It looks like blobs. Sorry, I was interrupted. My father was calling. Um, so uh, basically here the output mesh threshold determines how many we see details we see. Uh, if the threshold is zero, we see everything. All the particles are kind of visible. Uh, we can reduce the scale of the of the radius. So we can increase it, etc. A motion streak. I don't really know what that is. And the mesh triangle size can be very big, like this, or very very small, like this. And then we're already seeing what we want to see. Now we can shade them and. Uh, in order to put a nice color onto them, you need to pick them. You can do this in the viewport just to make sure you pick the polygon surface. 
I think the particles are not visible anymore anyway, but uh, we don't want to shade the particle system, we want to shade the poly surface. Actually, we could, no, we could not delete the particle system because it drives the animation of the meshes now. Okay, so uh, right mouse click like always, m new material, and an Arnold standard surface shader, which is white. We create a uh, light here, a sky dome light, which wraps around the whole scene, and we render it. So this is what we get. Quite nice, really. And when we run the simulation, uh, it uh, is rendered almost in re real time by Arnold. Uh, really nice and lovely. Now, finally, what I want to do is let us go back to the end particle here and I want a little bit of uh, a lower resolution here because of uh, I want to convert it into a mesh network and mesh is not very good at very complex uh, polygons. It wants simple polygons. Mesh that is this one here. Okay so we uh, increase the triangle size from 0 0.1 to say 0 0.2 so they are a little bit more rough. So this is the triangle size. You currently see it. It's it's not very high res anyway, but it's a it's a couple of thousands of polygons, I guess, uh, polygon faces, I guess. So um, mesh network. Uh, instead of going here to create mesh network, I prefer for <laughs> maybe it's very individual uh, reasons, I guess, uh, to use the tab here and create the mesh network right here. And now you see that um, there's a, there's lots of uh, objects here. We go to the distribute node, and uh, we currently have ten of them, ten of these uh, uh, particle things here. This is very nice indeed. Looks like a ten-cylinder engine, sort of. <laughs> Quite nice, really. Let's render this. Okay. Uh, could be nice uh, to be rendered in an animation. Instead of linear, we can uh, distribute it radially. And in order to give it a little bit of a randomness, not a randomness of the individual simulation here, the turbulence, well, that's driven by the turbulence field and the nucleus, but um, uh, a distribution of the mesh network. Uh, can we do this? Well, we just pick the mesh here, for example and the radius is uh, the radius of this whole uh, arrangement like this you see um, and uh, but we want uh, some randomness here so we go back to the main node which is called the waiter it waits for input and here's the random node and we can adjust some things in in the different positions here I want to leave the X as it is and probably the Y as well yes but the Z I want to change a little bit that's more or less the depth here and the rotation and then I can run the simulation again and that's all I wanted to show you because it can be sometimes frustrating to convert particles into polygons and you don't see them. Bye bye.